indictment upon the Superior Court is now in session. Judge George Spaulding presiding. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is my duty to prosecute and your duty to convict or acquit these seven defendants. These seven people are on trial either for murder or being accomplices to the act of murder. What they did, they did gladly and with full understanding. They are evil, all of them, seven evil people. Look at them carefully because they are your enemies and the enemies of every decent citizen. They're at war with you and always have been and always will be. Should they escape this time, the next victim may be you, or you, or you. Study their faces, all their faces. First, this one, Holiday Carlton, murderess. Charles Weber, John Reese. They were policemen, ladies and gentlemen, guardians of the law. Accomplices to the act of murder. Keith Mandon, formerly an attorney. Now the shame of his profession. Accomplice to the act of murder. Peter Cobbett, formerly a guard at the state penal farm, another supposed guardian of the law. Accomplice to the act of murder. Victor Mason, habitual criminal clothing his crimes in a coat of respectability, accomplice to the act of murder. Joseph Rayner, murderer. Well, there they are, ladies and gentlemen, all seven of them, and only seven. There should be eight, and believe me, I'm sorry that there are not, but unfortunately, the eighth the man who motivated this whole vicious and sinister crew, the most evil man of all, is not present. And yet he is here, in spirit, as you will find when the state rests its case. The first witness for the state will be Peter Cobbett. Peter Cobbett, take the stand. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Take the stand. Your name is Peter Cobbett? Yes, sir. You were formerly a guard at the state penal farm. Yes, sir. Would you be willing to make a statement before this court? Yes, sir. Proceed. Well, sir, I guess this all began one morning about four months ago. Real early in the morning. Uh, about five o'clock. Kitty's all right. Let's go. Well, this is going to be a beautiful morning. And the little old sun is going to be shining down on your heads all day long. And the birdies are going to be chirping to you from the trees. Ain't that cute? And all you boys are going out and playing the dirt, just like when you was kids again. Come on. Rise and shine. Well, you know it ain't everybody can be lucky enough to be out playing in that sun on a beautiful day like this. Yeah, that's the way. Everybody's gonna be crazy to get out in that beautiful sun and take a handful of them little old seeds and plant them in that little old earth. <laughs> oh, we'll make farmers out of you if it kills you. <laughs> I saw in the paper the other day where some fella said there's too many stick-up men and not enough farmers. <laughs> Don't worry about that. We'll take care of that for you. Now, just put on your little shoesies and wash your little hands and, and faces, faces and get out of here. Come on, you guys. Get up. Come on. Stop moving. Come on. Shake it up. Keep moving. Come on. Come on. Hurry up. Seven o'clock, relax. 
bus is going to be by here pretty soon. All right. Anything to keep you quiet. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you? You hungry? You eating dirt? Boy, a man would think you didn't like the food you get around here. <laughs> well, I've got a fever. I'm burning up. I need a drink of water. Fall it out. Second squad. Okay. Come on, come on. We'll get you a nice little drink. Over here. What's the matter with him? He's got a fever. <laughs> He's burning up. Go ahead, go on down and get your drink. No, you don't get prisoners like we got 10 or 15 years ago. They were good and tough in those days. <laughs> Fellow might as well be a guard in a female seminary for all the work you get now. Any tobacco? Sure, help yourself. Hey. Well, they're not very tough today. <laughs> Sure, that bus was gonna come while they were gone. Well, it didn't. When things get done by an expert, they get done right. That's the bus, all right. If we get another horn in five seconds, we'll be in business. That's it. All set? You think there'll be any shooting? Won't matter if you zigzag. Hey, hey! What do you guys think this is? An Easter egg hunt? Now stop John and scatter out. That's what you say, Caesar. Oh! Now move! through the head. It's too bad. Yeah, one of the guards got lucky. If he hadn't stopped, it wouldn't have happened. Shut up. Shut up! How many guards did you get? I didn't count. You want to go back? No, thanks. Just say the word and we'll do it all over again. There's some clothes up here in the front seat you better change. Not those. Try the other ones. Oh, fancy. Better than what you're wearing. My name's Rayner, Joe Rayner. Just call me Jinx. I'm Ralph Carter. Pleased to meet you. Even the air out here smells better. Oh, it's great to be alive. Say, Jinx, you better stop at some quiet gas station where we clean up. your brother. Oh, shut up. That was on the radio. Who's this? His name's Mason. We got the stuff from him. What else does it say on the radio? The usual. Only you're better looking than they said. You want to see me when I'm dressed up? I'll see you, Carter. I got an interest in you. I got to get back to the shop. Come on, Carter. All right. I'll be seeing you again, won't I? 
There's no need for you to see me again. So what's this shop Jinx was talking about? Radio shop. He fixes radios. Oh, he's in the wrong business the way he can drive a car. Now, you met a crack a minute ago I didn't get. You said you had an interest in me. That's right. I did this job on credit. Holiday owes me a thousand dollars. But Holiday hasn't got any money. What makes you think I have? Oh, I know you haven't any either. Uh, not right now, anyway. But there's a big difference between you and Holiday. She's honest. You're not. And you have certain, shall we say, ways of getting money. Am I right? Yeah, sure. But do you mind if I don't think about money for a half hour? All I want right now is milk. I haven't had any in two years. Take your time. There's no rush about payment. That's nice. There's a supermarket in the next block. Hartford's the name. Hartford. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, that stuff of mine in the back seat. Better get rid of it. How do you want it handled? I'd like the police to find it across the state line. They will. Good. Now, Mason, where does Holiday live? Marrakesh Apartments, 101. Marrakesh, 101. She goes by the name of Caldwell. Caldwell. Well, I'm glad you got here. So am I. My truck broke down and put me behind schedule a half an hour. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Mr. Hartford. Sorry I'm late. That's okay. We're both late today. What time do you usually get here, Joe? Oh, about 9.30, if the truck don't break down. What do you want? Lots of things. Well, you're not going to find them here. You'll be surprised what a man can find. Food, for instance. Will you please leave? Leave? Just got here. Seen the papers? Yeah, I've seen the papers. I don't want to talk about it. No, neither do I. As far as I'm concerned, it's all passed and done with. Your brother wasn't killed. No, that's right. That's right. Oh, uh, speaking of brothers, where was he going to live? I took a room for him here across the hall. Good. What do you mean, good? Well, since he won't be using it, I will. Well, incidentally, uh, uh, Mason tells me you're an honest to goodness nice girl. I never did anything wrong before today. Well, it takes only once, you know. As it stands, the police would love to get their hands on whoever shot that guard. Now, would one fugitive from justice care to fix another fugitive from justice? A sandwich? Will you go if I do? Fix it and we'll see. Tell me, where can I get in touch with Jinx? Shops in the phone book. Ace Radio Repair. Why? We got to do a little business. Get you out of Huck. No, thanks. I wouldn't like the way you'd get the money. I'll pay it off myself when I can. No, it won't work out that way. You see, you owe Mason something. I owe you something. After all, you did get me off that prison farm. I like to pay my debts, too. You don't owe me anything. If I could have one wish in my life come true, I wish today had never happened. The fact remains, it has happened. You, uh... You assisted in a prison break, which makes you just as much of a criminal as the people you helped. Now, you can keep that holy and thou attitude as long as you like. But uh, right now, I would say there must be, oh, 13,000 policemen in this state who would love to put you away for a long, long time. Now, I'd bear that in mind if I were you. And act accordingly. Now, what do you make of the stuff they're saying about your brother, that he was a mad dog killer? It's a lie. He wasn't. <laughs> They never are. He was railroaded. They framed him. 
I suppose your brother never did anything wrong in his life. He was wild, yes. He did a lot of silly things. But he never killed anybody. Well, maybe you're right. After all, he quit cold on me. He wouldn't have been hit if he hadn't stopped. Yeah? Maybe he was innocent. He certainly didn't act like a killer. Of course he was innocent. Nobody knew him any better than I did. Why do you think I tried to help him break out? I've never done anything wrong like that before in my life. I'll tell you why. Because he was going crazy up there. He knew he'd been framed. And he was just sitting there brooding about it month after month. If he'd have gone on much longer, he'd have ended up in an insane asylum. I couldn't stand to look into his face when I'd go up there and visit him. Don't you see, I had to try and help him break out, even if it meant that I went to... All right, all right, all right. He was innocent. <laughs> innocent as a newborn babe. Go ahead, be jealous. Be jealous because you're a, a criminal and he wasn't. Jealous? Jealous of that popcorn thief? That yellow pup? Get me another checkbook, Miss Staines. Miss Staines is going to be busy. Stay away from the switchboard and lay on the floor. Now, clasp your hand behind the back of your neck. Look, we've got a good police force in this town. They'll get you before you even have a chance to spend it. Relax, Mr. Hartford. It's only money. Now, are you going to clasp your hand behind the back of your neck? Or do I have to liquidate you? You think you're pretty cute, don't you? Now, you're cute. She's all taped up. What about him? Won't need it. $6,142, not counting the checks. Where'd you get it? From a recently deceased maiden aunt. Hartridge. Hartridge! Right down the street. Why'd you tell me where you're going? Oh, I'm awfully sorry, old man. I would have been delighted to tell you, except for one little thing. It was none of your business. Why'd you have to stick up a place in this neighborhood? Oh, stop bleeding. The damage has been done. Now, one quarter of 61.42 is 15.35. Two hundred dollars for the automatic, 17.35, plus the thousand that Holiday owes you, 27.35. As round a sum as you ever saw. Just a minute. What about my cut? I'm coming to that. Yeah, but you're coming to it too late. I got nothing to do with that thousand dollars Holiday owes. I'll take two grand. All right, Jinx. You want two grand? You get two grand. 
Do we have to stand here with all this money in plain sight and argue about it? Somebody might walk in here any minute. Let's go back in the battery room. I wouldn't want to be the man that walked in here. Then hurry up and split the stuff and get out. And don't ever come back. I don't want any part of you. If I'd known what I was getting into, why, you're stark staring nuts. <laughs> Don't you ever say that to me again, do you hear? Don't ever say that again. You beat it. Beat it. Get out of here. Oh, a trifling detail. I had a slug Hartford. Hit him a little hard. Very regrettable. He's still alive. I reckon he is, too. What a way to start a morning. Yeah. How's she, Doc? All right. Her pulse is up a little, that's all. Excitement, I guess. Will you talk to her? Sure. Now, Miss Staines, this is important. I want you to think carefully and give the best description you can of the two men. I... I don't know. You don't know? I was looking at the guns. That's all. All I saw, the guns. Miss Staines, we can't look for guns. We have to look for faces. We have to have something to go on. I told you. I only saw the guns. The guns, that's all I saw. The guns. All right, Miss Staines. That's all I saw. She's got a little case of shock. She's been arrested today. You can talk to her tomorrow. Tomorrow, the guys that did it could be in the next state. I can't help that. I've got my job. You've got yours. Come on, Tom. Let's get downstairs. Maybe somebody saw him leaving. Yeah. Stay where you are, Bob. Right. Well, the funniest part of it was when that siren sounded. Mason went right straight up in the air like he'd been shot. <laughs> what are you so gloomy about? You're off the hook, aren't you? You don't owe anybody anything. Except maybe society. Come on now, don't be foolish. You don't know where I got that money. For all you know, I might have found it in the street. You're trying to get me in deeper and deeper, aren't you? Sweetheart. Right now, you're in over your head. not one of my favorite people either. But I'll say one thing for him. He's got a heart as big as a Mack truck. You know what he did just before we come up here? He took all that money you paid him and put it right in the pot. I don't think Carter here knows about the old lady. Is that a fact? You don't know about the old lady? Well, she's very, very sick. They're sending her to Arizona. But how far will Mason's money go? She needs doctors, nurses, place to live and plenty to eat. It takes a lot of dough for that sort of thing. A lot of dough. Six thousand bucks. Guess we'd better get on downtown. Think we better put the cuffs on him, Reese? No, he ain't got nothing on him. You can put your hands down now. Sister, you better get your coat and hat on if we're going downtown. Come on, get your coat and hat. You stay here. I, uh... I'm awfully sorry about the old lady. She's got TB. Yeah, I know. She has to get to Arizona. Do you, uh, you suppose I could toss something into the pot? I suppose it might be all right. How much did you have in mind? Oh, about... About 1400 You got six grand. You want to put in 1400 Well, that's all there is left. Mason got 2700 and the, the other guy got two Gs. There's almost five Gs right there. And it was the first job we pulled here, and, and we were on our way through to Arizona. All right, all right. Where's the dough? 
in my coat in the bedroom. I'll get it. Don't bother. Reese! Get this guy's coat out of there. Bring the dame, too. Come on, come on. We'll need a hundred bucks to get out of town. The old lady wouldn't like that. She needs every cent. Now, listen, both of you. I want you to get out of town on separate buses. Separate buses, I said. And don't come back. Separate buses and don't come back. You got a good memory, little girl. Let's go. Oh, mister. Please. Could I have my automatic back? There are at least three dishonest men in the world. So you see, I am not unique. I wouldn't go through that again for a million dollars. Oh, we got off lucky. Any cop that'll shake you down is a cop that'll kill you, and just for the fun of it, too. Don't ever forget that. And when you get rid of that revolver, I don't trust them. They're always empty when you need them most. An automatic is the only thing. Ralph, where are you going? I'll be back in an hour. Don't go near Mason. Please, darling, stay away from Mason. I wasn't even thinking about him. We're broke. We've got to get money to get out of town. No, Ralph, no. It's taking too much of a chance. You've done too much already. Your luck won't hold. Better hold. Darling, listen to me. I've lost my brother, all I had. But now I've got you, and I don't want to lose you, too. I've got a little money saved, enough to get us out of the city, out of the state, even. We could start all over. You could get a job. How much have you got? About $20. Be back in an hour. It's Jinx. Anybody with you? No. You don't have to say a word. I know exactly how you feel. They cleaned us, too. Well, they didn't clean me. I went out the back door of the shop and I saw them coming in. Well, you can trust the inspector. I bet he took everything you got. Inspector? That shakedown artist was an inspector? Yes, Inspector Weber. Hmm. Cut yourself a piece of cake, Inspector. Hmm. Cut yourself two pieces of cake. Do you mean to tell me you've still got the money? Yeah, sure. I got two grand right in my pocket. Oh, that's wonderful. Then we can all get started in some new city. Oh, wait a minute. Let's not be hasty. I have an idea. We can do some business with the Inspector. We might be able to fix this. It might be we won't have to start running. That would be all right with you, wouldn't it? Yeah, sure. It'd be fine. All right, then we stay. And I don't want any arguments. Now, what do we need? What do we need to make some recording in this place? No, we Ralph, we've caused too much no. trouble already. What do we need? Well, we'd have to have a portable recording machine. We use that photograph of the playback. We'll have to have some 10-inch acetates, some cutting needles, and a microphone with about 20, 30 feet of cable. All right, get them. Get them, and give me your two grand. Give me your two grand. I might as well have given it to Weber. Oh, no, Weber would have spent it foolishly. I'm going to invest it for you. You fool, you fool. You crazy fool. You said yourself a cop that'll shake you down will kill you. You try and frame Weber and you'll frame yourself right into the morgue. He's too smart for you. Oh, no. He stopped being smart when he took my money. He's still a big man and he knows how to protect himself. Especially against small timers like you that try and put something over on him. Oh, go get the stuff and start setting it up. I'll meet you back here. And darling, by this time tomorrow, the word small timer will have walked right out of your vocabulary. If we're still alive. Mason. Mason. What do you want? I want a car. I thought maybe you could drive me and Holiday out of town. Sorry I can't help you, Ralph Opel. Very sorry. Nothing I'd like better than to drive you and the dame somewhere and have you put a bullet in my bag. Oh, you've got me all wrong, Vic. I'm not sore. I'm not holding any grudge. I can pay $2,000. $2,000. You didn't think I'd have the inspector claim me, did you? I don't care if you can pay two million dollars. Get out of here. Vic, you mean you won't help me? 
I wouldn't cut you down if you were hanging. All right, Vic. Speak to Inspector Weber. Vic Mason. Hello, Inspector. Ralph Carter was just in here. He offered me $2,000 to let him have a car. What? You let him have it? No, I didn't let him have the car. But I thought you'd like to know about the $2,000. Yeah, that's right, Inspector. All right, thanks. Okay, goodbye. How much longer are you going to take? Hurry up, hurry up. It's getting close. What's the matter? Big brain starting to worry? Okay, all set. But try to keep him out of this room. This thing makes a little noise. Inspector. Still here, huh? Well, up. Uh, I thought you'd be on your way by this time. What are we trying to get away, sir? Trying to locate a car. There's two or three buses leave here for Arizona every day. I guess you don't appreciate when a guy's good to you, huh? I gave you one break. Maybe I made a mistake. I wanted him to leave, Inspector, but he said we didn't have enough money. Yeah, that was the trouble, sir. There's no money. You, you know, you took all we had, and I had to get in touch with that friend of mine who helped me pull the Hartford job, and he let me have a few hundred. Yeah, quite a few. It added up to two grand. Well, I see I can't keep any secrets from you, sir. Here it is, 2,000 cash. How much of this will you let us keep? Only 100, sir? Oh, look, Inspector, uh, we're going to Arizona, all right, but I was just wondering. This friend of mine who helped me pull the market job told me about a payroll that was a pushover, a very big payroll, enough for all of us. How big a payroll? Well, 25 or 30 grand. I don't trust you. Well, there's no reason why you should, but if anything goes wrong, you know, you can always use that old stall about uh, having been tipped off and grabbing us red-handed and all that. You're an inspector. You can get away with that. Oh, Inspector, you'll have to excuse the appearance of the bedroom. The maid hasn't shown up yet. Ouch. What do you think, John? If you're still doing the thinking, Inspector. I think we might give it a whirl. Anything you say. If anything goes sour with the heist, they'll look like sieves when we get through with them. Where is this payroll job? I don't know. My friend knows. Where's your friend now? Well, uh, that I don't know either. But uh, I think I know where I can get in touch with him. You think you can raise him by 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon? Oh, yes, I'm sure of that. Well, after you've located him, call me at headquarters. If I'm not in, just say Mr. Baker called. I'll know what that means, Mr. Baker. All right, Inspector Weber. Mr. Baker. I'll remember. I'll remember. Yeah. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. And a slight case of heart failure. 
Let's hear it. Oh, Inspector. Still here, huh? Well, uh, I thought you'd be on your way by this time. Boy, we're trying to get away, sir. Trying to locate a car. There's two or three buses leave here for Arizona every day. I gave you one break. Maybe I made a mistake. I want... Now, are you satisfied, dear? I'm satisfied you're gonna get us all killed. There's my girl. I wouldn't be too sure. Hmm. Jinx, where's a good lawyer? Where's my hundred bucks? You what? The hundred bucks Weber gave you back. It's still mine. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, uh, you know, I told you I was gonna invest your money for you. Well, this time the investment will take the form of a new suit. For who? For me. And now that that's over, we still need the name of a good lawyer to help us in this. Doc Green. Doc, he doesn't sound like a lawyer. He ain't. He ain't a doctor either. And I'll tell you something else he ain't. He ain't to be trusted. Why should he be different? Dr. Darius Green, philosophic guide. Organon Aristotle, Novum Organum Bacon, Tertium Organum Uspensky. The key to cosmic consciousness, the spatial understanding of time. Do not be lost in the labyrinth of confused thought. You sure we've come to the right place? Oh, sure. Oh, I forgot to tell you, though. He's nuts, too. Hmm. Aristotle, Bacon, and Uspensky. Pretty fair parlay. All attempts to purify and elevate the mind will assist you in this attainment facilitate the approach and the recurrence of these happy intervals. There are then different roads by which this end may be reached. The love of beauty which exalts the poet, that devotion to the one and that essence Why don't we of wait the outside? which makes the Shh. ambition of the philosopher. I these like are here. the great highways conducting to the height above the actual and particular, where we stand in the immediate presence of the infinite, who shines out as from the depths of the soul. Such was one of Plotinus' letters to Flaccus. And I especially wanted you to hear it because it coincides with my own theory of knowledge. Shall we concentrate upon that perhaps a minute or two? My friends, there is some new literature which Miss Thompson will distribute as you leave. And now, my friends, I'm tired. You must excuse me. trouble with that one. Good night. Good night. May I speak to Dr. Green for a moment, please? Oh, Dr. Green never gives personal interviews after a reading. He's usually much too tired. Well, unfortunately, this matter can't wait. It's much too vital. If we weren't, I wouldn't think of disturbing him. Yeah, he knows me. Just tell him... I'm sure it'll be all right. May I have your names, please? My name is Paul Murphy, and this is Joseph Rayner. I'll tell Dr. Green. Thank you, sir. Doctor, this is uh, Paul Murphy and Joseph Rayner. How do you do, sir? What is it, gentlemen? Oh, may we talk to you alone? Well, I have no secrets for Miss Dobson. Well, uh, this matter is not concerned with cosmic consciousness. Well, there are no other matters that I wish to be consulted about. May I be excused, Dr. Green? If you insist. Good night, Doctor. Good night, my dear. How dare you come here? How dare you? Easy, Doctor, easy. I refuse to have anything to do with you. That life for me is over. I shall heal no more bodies. I shall heal only minds. There's nobody to heal. All we want is a name. We've been looking for a lawyer of the right kind, and we didn't know where to go. Go to the classified section of the telephone book and look under lawyers. Doc, let's be reasonable about this. Now, you've worked with the mob. You must know someone. Oh, that was years ago. Two years ago. Just two. Doc, 
You don't want to be bothered with us anymore, do you? No. Well, then, give us a name. Try Keith Mandon. Cherokee Mandon. He's an evil man, too. Thanks. The only way you can thank me is not to come here again. Well, anyway, Doc, it's nice to see you reformed. Dr. Dobson, I presume? Mr. Murphy, was your interview satisfactory? Oh, very. Now that I presume once, may I presume again? In what way? Well, uh, we are badly in need of a phone booth. And we seem to be out of the range of phone booths, and I wonder if you would drop us at a drugstore. I'm afraid I don't know you, Mr. Murphy. Oh, forget Miss Dobson. I don't know you either. Get in. This is very nice of you. Oh, not at all. What did you think of the doctor's paper? I came in a little late. Besides, I'm not up on cosmic consciousness. It wasn't on cosmic consciousness. It was on the psychology of knowledge. Oh, same thing. What is it, religion or something? No, it's a philosophy. It goes into the fourth dimension. Or I should say the mathematical conception of the fourth dimension. Oh, that lets me out. I'd like to see you at one of the doctor's meditations, Mr. Murphy. Oh, I'd be a very bad influence. My vibrations would be positively poisonous. You see, I don't hold with the theory that the fourth dimension is either philosophical or mathematical. I think it's purely intuitional. Oh? Hmm. I don't mean to start an argument or, or sound pretentious, but that's the way I feel about it. I never heard that before. Well, something we should go into sometime, among other things. Hey, there's a drugstore. Well, oh, there'll be others. Well, we don't want to impose. Thank you very much. This will be fine. Your name is Keith Mandon? Yes. You formally practiced law in this state. I've not yet been disbarred. Quite so. But I'm sure that such will be the case in the near future. Objection. Sustained. The prosecutor will please remember that a prisoner is innocent until proven guilty. Such insinuations are singularly out of place. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Mandon, will you tell us in your own words your connection with these people? It was coercion. I beg your pardon? I said coercion. Will you tell us what you mean by coercion? Certainly. I was sitting at home one night, relaxing after a very hard day. Even the prosecution will bear me out that a lawyer's lot, like the policeman's, is not a very happy one. Well, anyway, the doorbell rang. And as my houseboy was busy in the kitchen preparing coffee, I answered it myself. Mr. Mandel? What do you want? I want to talk to you, sir. Oh, this is where I live, not where I work. See me at my office. Don't oh, please, Mr. Madden. It may be too late, then. This is very urgent, very important. Important to you, too, sir. Hmm? Come in. Well, uh, I can't see what should be so important at this hour of the night. I need some advice, Mr. Madden. People who come to see me generally do. Advice on something that's already happened or that's going to happen? Both. How much money have you got? Well, it's not how much money I have. It's how much I'm going to have. I don't deal in futures. But these futures are not gambles. That is, uh, gambles in the usual sense. Do these futures include, by any chance, the breaking of the law? Uh-huh. Any man who breaks the law is a sucker. Does that include the police? Any policeman who breaks the law is twice a sucker. I know two who have. I got them nailed. One of them's an inspector. I suppose you know his name. Weber. Charlie Weber. Inspector of detectives. Toughest man in the department, and you've got him nailed. The rabbit nailing the wolf. Wait, stand by, I know. Go back and tell him I didn't bite. Who? The lawyers who sent you. 
Tell them if they want me disbarred, why don't they file charges with the Bar Association? I don't know what you're talking about. Now, these little traps they set for me get more and more complicated all the time. Charlie Weber. Charlie Weber. What do they take me for, a fool? Ennis, throw this fellow out. Tell him to get out. Here, here, put that gun away. Tell him to get out. All right, Highness, leave the room. No, no, put it away. After you decide to go with me, I've got something to show you, and I'm going to see to it that it's shown. Who told you about me? Doc Green. What Doc Green? You know what, Doc Green. Highness! Highness! Get my clothes, Highness. I'm going out. Oh, yes, I'm sure of that. After you've located him, call me at headquarters. If I'm not in, just say Mr. Baker called. I'll know what that means. Mr. Baker. All right, Inspector Weber. Mr. Baker. I'll remember. Are you convinced? Yeah, I'm convinced, but uh, I don't know what to say. All I want from you is a yes or no. Have I got him, and do you or don't you want in on this? Oh, you got him all right, but uh, he's a big man, a very tough man. The slightest mistake, you'll never know what hit you. Answer the question. Are you in or out? Suppose we go in the living room, sit down, get acquainted. There's a lot of things I want to find out about you people before Weber drops around tomorrow. Mr. Mandon, yeah. what do you think? Oh, he's got something all right. I guess he has it that. All set. They're right on time. How are you this afternoon? Fine, just fine. I hear Vic Mason met with an accident. That's so. Kill him? Not quite. Hmm, pity. Is this your friend? Oh, yes, this is Jinx Rayner, Inspector Weber, Mr. Reese. Lieutenant Reese. I beg your pardon, Lieutenant Reese. Does he know what it's all about? Hmm. Ask him. He understands English. What about this payroll job you got spotted? Well? Yes, sir. That's right. How big a payroll is it? Pretty big. How big? Well, that's pretty big. Cut it out. How big is it? Where is it? What place? You better tell him. You better tell him. Inspector Weber, there's a friend of yours here. I think we better have him tell you. Hello, Charlie. What are you doing here, Cherokee? Well, having a conference with my client. Clients? Yes, sir. <laughs> I sometimes confer with my clients outside of jail. As I remember, you've had quite a bit of trouble keeping yourself out of jail in your time. What is this, Mandon? Sit down and listen. I can listen from here. Suit yourself. All right, Jinx, but uh, not too loud. No sense in having the neighbors call the police. Oh, Inspector. Still here, huh? Well, uh, I thought you'd be on your way by this time. Well, we're trying to get away, sir. Trying to locate a car. There's two or three buses leave here for Arizona every day. I guess you don't appreciate when a guy's good to you, huh? I gave you one break. Maybe I made a mistake. I wanted him to leave, Inspector, but he said we didn't have enough money. Yeah, that was the trouble, sir. No money. You, you know, you took all we had, and I had to get in touch with that friend of mine who helped me pull the Hartford job, and he let me have a few hundred. Yeah, quite a few. It added up to two grand. Well, I see I can't keep any secrets from you, sir. Here it is. Get your hands up! Get over there against that wall, are you? No, 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 no. Don't do that, Inspector. You missed the best part. The best part where you plan to heist a payroll. Shut up! Frisk him, Reese. We haven't got any guns. Where are they? In the bedroom. Where in the bedroom? Beats me. Cut that out, John. I don't want the coroner to find any bruises on these birds. I told you you'd go too far. I'm gonna hate myself in the morning for this. Pulling that trigger, Charlie, will be just like putting a bullet through your own head. Now, you ought to know that there's more than a single copy of that record. 
Or do you suppose we got you here just to slaughter us? No, no. We got you here, Charlie, to tell you you've just been signed by our ball club. And just to make sure you do play ball, we send copies of that record to some very reliable friends. Now, so they don't hear from us within the hour. If we can't tell them that everything's fine, those records are gonna be played for the mayor, Charlie, for the district attorney, and of course, for the chief of police. Why don't you stop being childish when all we want from you is a little cooperation? And my 3,400 bucks. I guess I'd better get this attended to. Yeah. Go into the bathroom and get yourself a towel before we have to start buying carpets for this place. May I look at that, please? You almost broke my arm with that. You know that, don't you? Well, look, Carter, I didn't... Now, you feel any better? place to go and I'm all alone. We could drive and talk. That's what I was hoping for. Where would you like to go? There are four directions here, sort of local phenomenon. North, east, south, and west. Which do you prefer? The one without the traffic. That's the one I know best. Don't you take it out of second? Why did you stop? So I could light a cigarette and to let you drive if you want to. I don't want to drive. What are you trying to prove? Prove? I'm not trying to prove anything. What are you afraid of? Now, really, what am I afraid of? Well, what scared you? You? Don't look at me like that. Glad you finally decided to stop. You're lucky you're in one piece. Let's see your driver's license. Is your name Margaret Dobson? What does it say on the license? 
Now, listen, Miss Dobson. You were traveling pretty fast back there. Suppose you'd blown a front tire. You'd been spread all over the road. And we don't want Ezra Dobson's daughter killed on our beat, do we, Damon? No, we certainly don't. He's too nice a man. Just take it easy from here on in, will you, Miss Thompson? Yes, certainly. Say, haven't I seen your face somewhere before? Mm hmm. Maybe at the policeman's ball. Yeah, maybe. Maybe so. Well, good night, sir. Good night. Next time I come out with you, I'm going to bring along an extra set of nerves. Who is your father? Police commissioner or something? No. Please don't worry about him. Who are you? I said don't worry about him. All right. I won't. Now, let's see. Where were we when we were so rudely interrupted? Don't you remember? Mm-hmm. Seems I do. Did you have a good time last night? Yeah, I went to a movie. First movie I'd seen in three years. Some movie. Here she has a foreign car. She? Foreign car? What are you talking about? The woman you and Jinx met the other night. Hasn't she got a foreign car? I don't know what kind of car she has. I don't even know her name or where she lives. I wouldn't know how to find her even if I wanted to. Finding her shouldn't be difficult for a bright boy like you. Not for a mastermind like you. Well, well. You finally made that discovery. Took you a little while, but you finally made it. That's fine. Would you like some coffee? Mm hmm. Would you like some coffee? Mm, well, it. I like mine the cup. No cream? How about some sugar? Oh. No cigar. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days you're going to get yourself killed. There isn't a cop in the world can shoot that straight. I wasn't talking about a cop. I was talking about me. Why, I thought you were the law-abiding type. I guess I'm just whatever you make me. But I'm very jealous. I'll put up with a lot from you, but not another woman. I still don't know what you're talking about. I can barely handle you. What do you think of it? Very nice. Just like Mother used to make. Nervous? Nervous? What have I got to be nervous about? All right, let's go in and try it on for size. Send it to my brother, the only honest man in the world. I didn't know you had a brother. Lots of things about me you don't know, Cherokee. For instance, Ralph Carter is not my real name. What is your real name? <laughs> if you knew, you would die. Well, we, we wouldn't want that to happen, would we? Well, what do you know? Cherokee Mandan. <laughs> How are you? Who's your friend? Hiya, Trek. This is Paul Murphy. He's in my office now. Sergeant oh. Satterfield. How are you? What does he do? Well, I'll tell you. He goes around persuading kids to take up a life of crime. Then when you boys put the pinch on them, I get to be their lawyer. Sort of a legal shill, aren't you, Paul? <laughs> kind of a 20th century Fagan. <laughs> uh, is that office empty? Why? Uh, I want to speak to Paul. Oh, it's empty. Thanks. Go ahead. Help yourself. It is. Well, you must be crazy bringing a heater into this lion's den. What if one of these coppers should... Well, I'd rather go around without my ears and go around without that. Take it easy. I'll get your permit to carry it. Oh, just like that. Just like that. Mm. Did you ever kill anybody with this? No. 
Not yet. Is Weber in? He's eating his lunch. Tell him we're here with his dessert. What is it? Cherokee Mandon is here to see you, Inspector. Tell him to come in. What do you want? The card gun? See what happens when you let me handle things? Cherokee, you are a wizard. I take my hat off to you. How'd you ever get it here? Paul, uh, I took the liberty of suggesting to Inspector Weber here that we forget all about that $3,400 you mentioned and that he get you this card instead. Now, uh, shall we conclude the ritual? Inspector, I thank you very, very much. I really appreciate this. Don't mention it. Oh, how's your hand? Not infected, I hope. My hand is all right. Well, you know, those phonograph needles can pick up an awful lot of dirt. Yes? The chief wants to see you, Inspector, right away. Thank you. I hope you'll be gone when I get back. Sam, how's the poker game going? What poker game? The one in the detective bureau? Well, you know there's no poker game in the detective bureau, Sam. What's in here? I'm still asking the questions, Charlie. What have you got on the Hartford robbery? Well, nothing so far. Looks to me like the work of some out-of-town boys. Not to me, it doesn't. Who have you got on the case? Gray and Collar. Two men? Why should I put the whole bureau on a robbery? Why? I'll tell you why. Because it isn't a robbery anymore. The hospital called up a little while ago. Hartford is dead. So you better heave a few more of those men out of their chairs and put them on a case. You understand? I understand. Well, then understand this, too. I'm giving you 48 hours to clear up this case, and if it isn't solved by the end of that time, I'm getting myself another boy. And I don't expect you to spend your time watching the clock and counting up to 48. Clear? Clear. That's all, then. Get out. You still here? Well, we didn't want to leave without saying goodbye. That's not why you stayed. No, as a matter of fact, it isn't. Charlie, we want a gun permit made out in the name of Paul Murphy. Who's Paul Murphy? I'm Paul Murphy. I thought it would help if we changed his name. It's very thoughtful of you. You know I can't issue a gun permit. Why, well, the chief of police can issue a gun permit. Well, we were hoping that the inspector would speak to the chief of police. I just spoke to the chief of police. The name is Paul Murphy. Well, I guess I can speak to him again. Here, fill this out, I'll see what I can do. Oh, here where it says, reason for requesting permit. What do I put? That's why you put on the reason for requesting the permit. Hmm. Uh -huh. Well, supposing I say, uh, often carry large sums of money. Oh, yeah, that ought to do. When do you think you'll be carrying large sums of money? Soon. I'll give you warning. Listen here, Mandon. I want you to keep this guy from fooling with anything federal. Banks and things like that are bringing in government agents before you can bat an eye. Don't worry. I'm talking to you, Mandon. Yes, yes. The minute you pick out something, you let me know before you make a move. And I might as well tell you, Cotter. Murphy. All right, Murphy. The chief just gave me 48 hours to get you, dead or alive. 
preferably dead. Well, thank the chief for me. Tell him I'm sorry to have taken up his time. Goodbye, Charlie. Nice to meet you, Chuck. Thank you. Bye, Chuck. Goodbye. How do you feel? Oh, fine. I feel fine. You ought to. You've just been born again. That makes it official. You know, every time somebody gets born, they slap him on the back. Uh-huh. Cherokee, I salute you as the one who has proven himself worthy to share my frenetic genius. From now on, you shall manage all my affairs as you deem fit and proper. You should have been a lawyer. Why? I have a lawyer. And now, uh, can that lawyer tell me what Ezra Dobson's title is? He has many titles, ex-mayor, ex-governor, ex-U.S. senator. No, that isn't what I mean. I mean, what's his title now? Right now, he's president of Watco Steel, worth 30 million as the crow flies. Is that what you want to know? That is exactly what I wanted to know. Why? Oh, he has a very, very lovely daughter. And that will be all of that. She's poison. Come on. The one man who can ruin Every plan we've made is Dobson. He's the most powerful figure of the entire state. If you get mixed up with her, you're bound to get mixed up with him, and that we can't afford. Believe me, Paul, the day Dobson walks into this picture, I walk out. Now, the future looks awfully good. We're getting things pretty well set up now. Don't tear them down before they're built. Anything you say, Cicero? Anything you say? Going down. Close in. Actually, I live on Willow Creek Drive. Yes, I know. I saw it on your car registration. Nice, nice, very nice. Mr. Dobson, your father called. Thank you, Julia. Is there ice in the bar? Yes, Miss Dobson. He said, would you please call him as soon as you came in? Very well, Julia. That'll be all for tonight. Yes, Miss Dobson. Would you like a drink? Yes, sir. Uh, your Julia said there's ice in the bar. Let's find it. Yes. Let's find it. After you kiss me. Uh-huh. Julia, did you ask Miss Margaret to call me? Yes, Mr. Dobson. So this is the reason you didn't call me. Take this man out of here. No, Father, no. You heard me. You can't. Paul is my husband. Husband? You mean you're married? Married? When? Tonight. We were going to tell you about it at breakfast. The certificate's over there in my bag. Now, will you please ask your private police force to leave? Really, Father, you make things so awkward sometimes. I'm sure Paul must be wondering what kind of family he's married into. It was impulsive and insane, but nothing you can do will change anything. Who else knows about this? The clerk and the justice who married us. Did they know who you were? I don't know. I don't think so. Do you know who he is? Well, he's my husband. That's not what I mean. Who is he? Where did he come from? Well, he'll tell you himself. I want to hear it from you. I don't know. He hasn't lived here very long. But I have an idea he won't live here much longer. But I do know that I love him, and that's all that matters to me. What do you know about love? Have you ever been in love before? Or have you reached the point where any Tom, Dick, and Harry with a glib tongue can have you fainting in five minutes? Father! You even went across the state line to do it. 
Why? Because in this state you have to wait three days. No, no, that's not the reason. The reason is you were afraid someone at City Hall would have tipped the papers off that you'd taken out a license. And you knew that if when I heard about it, I'd have cracked down on you like a ton of bricks. Young man, I've brought my daughter up as well as any girl in this country. And I'm not going to permit her to be swept off her feet by any ragged stranger. Right now, I don't know anything about you. But believe me, within 24 hours, I will. Everything. Father, this is very embarrassing to Paul. Couldn't we talk about it in the morning? Yes, we most certainly will talk about it in the morning. As a matter of fact, I insist on it. And we'll talk about an annulment, too. In the meantime, will you do me the small favor of not saying anything about this until after we have talked? Yes, Father. I never thought I'd have a fool for a daughter. I guess I didn't handle that very well. What do you mean? He was mad. Any two-headed child could see that. You no, know, you don't understand. Usually when I talk to him like that, he gives in. Mm -hmm. This time, I'm afraid he won't. He'll cool out by morning. No. No, he won't. I saw his face. Uh-huh. Well, Margaret, here's something your father doesn't know. I want you. You're all I've ever wanted, and I'm not going to give you up. You won't let him force you. I don't force easily. You don't know father. Suppose I refuse to have the marriage annulled. What'll he do then? He could make you wish you never saw the city. He could make you wish you'd never been born. I've seen him do it before to others, in politics, in business, in everything. Well, we'll face that when we come to it. Now, you go on and get yourself some sleep, hmm? Good night, darling. Good night, darling. Now, this merely states that from now and hereafter, you renounce all claims on the estates of Ezra and Margaret Dobson. Would you like me to read it? No. Before you sign it, you have a legal right to know exactly what it contains. I'll sign it. Is that all I have to sign? Yes. To compensate you for your trouble, here's a certified check for $25,000. I don't want that money, Mr. Dobson. I regret this whole affair just as much as you do and as much as Margaret does. It was thoughtless and childish of both of us. And for my part, I'm sorry. And I'm sure Margaret is too. Good day, sir. Goodbye, Margaret. The marriage certificate. Seven stop. Yeah. Seven little satchels, all getting filled with money. What's your guess on how much money? Plenty. Rome will take a bet on any track in the country. two hours already. Keep this up much longer. They're sensing you wise to us. Oh, they've been doing this so long, they've gotten fat, cocky, and careless. We couldn't tip them off. We sat in the roof of their car. Yeah, our has got the bookie business cornered. There's probably $25,000 or more in those satchels. Want me to hang on? No, we've seen enough, haven't we? Is our gimmick. Why don't we use it? You mean you're going to steal a squad car? Let's go see Weber. This is it. 
I thought we were going to Weber's office. There seems to be one of them. How many does he have? Right now, I couldn't tell you. I hope this didn't put you out too much. No, you didn't put us out. Sit down. Right. Sit down, Jinx. Now, Cherokee, what is this big idea of yours that you can't tell me about on the telephone? Uh, before telling you, Charlie, I want you to know that we haven't gone off half-cocked on this. It's dangerous, but we can handle it. If the inspector will cooperate. What is it, a heist? Yeah. Who? Romer's collectors. Romer's collectors? What made you pick them? They carry a lot of money. Now look, you try anything like that and you're gonna get this whole town shot up. You might just as well forget about it right now. There will not be any shooting as such. I guarantee it. How are you gonna do it? Hypnotize them? With your help, yes. What kind of help? Policeman's uniform. A bu oh, this is a very funny boy. Yeah, he's a comic. Listen here, Cherokee. This may come as a surprise to you, but I've got a deal with Romer. What's gonna happen when his collectors tell him they've been stuck up by cops? Who do you think he's gonna come to? Why, he won't be satisfied till I put every cop on the force in the show up for him. There may be some excuse for this guy not using his head, but there's no excuse for you not using yours. Inspector, his collectors won't be around to tell him anything. Three guys disappearing all of a sudden must leave some kind of an echo. An echo is not evidence. They will just disappear. And Romo will think they've blown with his dough. Would you mind telling me where you plan to stash three bodies and a car? We'll find a place. Say, I know of an abandoned quarry out on the old whole turnpike. It's full of water and a hundred feet deep. Shut up! Thanks, Lieutenant. Look, I know what Romer's daily take is. He pays me off on a basis of it. It's 20 grand. And three men for 20 grand is a little bit too as much. As long as you're going to prorate this, don't leave out the car they'll be in. That has to disappear, too. And a shiny new car is worth more than all the three mugs put together. What kind of a job do you think we came up here to tell you about? A neighborhood drugstore, a gas station, or snatching some old woman's purse? Well, that's more in your line. A swell-headed hood talking about or, or killing people and everything else. Swell-headed hood, am I? That was where you made your original mistake thinking that. That's how you got caught in the ringer. What do Roma's men mean to me? I don't worry about them any more than you do shaking down a guy and then shooting him in the back to keep him from singing. Listen, you, all of you. Stop acting stupid. Your boss sees you. You're a hero. Get this maniac out of here, Cherokee, or else talk some sense into him. All right. All right. Let's go, Ralph. Paul. All right, come on, Paul. Wait a minute. You may come out, Joseph. Gentlemen, why don't you and I try to get along? Hating my gut shouldn't make you act like this. It'll do for the time being. Well, be that as it may, let's talk sense. I don't want to jeopardize your deal with Romer, Inspector, believe me. But this job is proposed on the basis of a complete and perfect disappearance. And all we want from you is a policeman's uniform. And for that, you get a third of the take. A third? That's right, a third. Somebody will find them sometime. They'll find something. Charlie, if there were the slightest chance of that happening, we wouldn't pull it. That's fair enough, isn't it? Maybe. Maybe it is. That's fair enough. Goodbye, Charlie. What's the matter with you? Maybe it's that uniform. What's wrong with it? It's a good fit. I just don't feel right sitting here beside it. Is that all that's worrying you? Watch where you're going. Gonna be all right? I don't have to like what I'm doing. Oh, so that's it. No, you don't have to like it, but you better do it. And remember, stick close behind us. Parking in a loading zone is a traffic violation. So what? Where's your driver's license? I don't have any. Oh, that's also a violation. What's your name? What do you want? 
This man's name, I'm going to write him a ticket. On your way, copper. What's the beef? Parking and loading zone and no driver's license. We work for Romer, fella. Well, I'm new on the force, and I don't know who Romer is, but it wouldn't make any difference if I did. You like your job, fella? You want to keep it? Then blow. Let's go, Rushy. Hold it. Why, listen, you. Hey, don't start anything about a parking ticket. You know where headquarters is? We know. We That's know. where we're going. Go ahead, Rushy. Take your job too serious. Well, we have our orders, mister. You're gonna get some new orders. Romer even tells Weber where to get off. Shut up, Sid. Yeah, shut up, Sid. Oh, don't turn that way, Rushy. Drive straight ahead. That's the way to police headquarters. Uh-huh. Gee, what is this anyway? It's a picnic. We're going on a picnic. It's a heist! Clasp your hands behind your neck. That's a good boy. Romer will get you for this, Junior. Mm-hmm. You still think you know the way to police headquarters, Rushy? Yeah. Oh, no, you don't. They moved away out in the country, out on the old Holt Turnpike. Now, you just keep driving straight ahead, and I'll show you where it is when we get there. Cooperative borrowers. Hello, Romer. How are things? You still getting rich? Well, I was until today. My collectors haven't showed yet. What? They've disappeared. When? Well, they were due at 3 o'clock. Well, uh, how many were there? Three. Three? Yeah, and you better get out and find them quick, here. Yeah? Oh, take it easy, Romer. Remember, they just went across the street for a short beer or something. I don't care what they stepped out for. You'll find them, understand? Well, uh, look, Romer, that's not my job. Well, it is now. Well, job at all or anything else. What are you getting sore at me for? I haven't got them in my hip pocket. Have you looked lately? No, Romer. Well, get looking. All right. Now. Yeah. All right, Romer. Why don't you tell him what happened to his collectors? Maybe I will. Now who's the comic? Here's your cut. Seventeen grand. You mean a third of the take is 17 grand? To be exact, 17,101. I divided it up on the drive back. Altogether, $51,303. And that bird's been paying us off on the basis of 20 grand a day. Yeah. That's what I always say, you can't trust crooks. Well, don't think it hasn't been charming, Jack. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. All kidding aside, now what am I gonna tell this guy? Oh, don't worry. I will take care of Romer. Any business that pays $50,000 a day is a very good business to be in. So if Roma should drop dead some afternoon... Come, Joseph. Take that bag over to Holiday and divide it three ways, and drop me off at Mandan's with this one. Inspector, as I said, I will take care of Roma. And he'll take care of us, too, if we don't do something to stop him. I have us all crazy, man. He said... I tell you, he'll have us all on the end of a rope one of these days. Remember, just five minutes. Mason? Mason, we've got the car. What car? The car that was used in the Hartford job. We found it in your garage, Mason. Looks like we've got you. I didn't have anything to do with it. Hartford's dead, Mason. You're the only one we've got. You can burn. So you better not try to cover up for anyone. Sure, Vic. Just tell us who did it. Cotter. Ralph Cotter. Where's he live? I don't know. See, Holiday Carlton. She goes by the name of Caldwell. Marrakesh Apartments, she knows. See, Doc, it didn't even take five minutes. Just a minute. What did you do after you left Weber's office? Just what he told me to. 
I went back to Holiday's place and counted the money. But I was sick. Sick? Yeah, for what I'd done. I'd never done anything like that before. And I began to think this Carter was cuckoo. I wanted out. I felt like a man on the top floor of a house that's on fire. You run for a winter to jump out, and there's no ladder. If you jump, you get killed. If you stay where you are, you get killed. That's how it was. And uh, after you counted the money, then what happened? We were scared. Me and Holiday. Do you know how it feels to be scared? Yes. Oh. What's that? Champagne. The traditional victory drink. I never saw a bottle that big. Ah, uh, it's a Jeroboam. They come even bigger. There's the Methuselah, there's the Belshazzar, the Nebuchadnezzar, and uh, this is ice, and this is goblets, and that is money. Does it still add up the same, Mr. Rockefeller? Not quite. I uh, took my two grand you gave Weber off the top. Oh, uh, what was your rush? You'd have gotten it. I want to make sure I'm not working with you anymore. No? No, it ain't safe. A guy's got to draw the line someplace. Mm. Well, suit yourself. How about you? You didn't need to get special glasses. We got glasses in the kitchen. I asked, how do you feel? You know how I feel about you. I'm not going to leave you, honey. Well, neither is Jinx, only he doesn't know it yet. No? Just watch. Jinx, I was just thinking about those three dead men in the quarry. If they had a fourth, they could play some bridge. You play bridge, Jinx? Now let's get down to business. Enough champagne. Ralph, Jinx is afraid. I'm afraid, not for myself, honey, but for you. If you don't stop, something will happen to you. Of course something will happen to me. And to you, too. Tell me, do you, uh, do you like sables? I just like you. Only like? More than like. <laughs> but alive, darling. Alive. Well, well, if it isn't the richest lawyer in town, it's at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Sit down, we're about to pop a cork. I want to talk to you. Well, go ahead, talk. Outside. Talk to him here. I haven't got any secrets from Holiday. I wouldn't make book on that. Outside. Back in a minute. Don't let that get warm. All right, all right. Now, what is it? Carter, you're in a jam. A 14 carat solid gold jam. And if you'll keep your vanity off the sidewalk for a minute, I'll be glad to tell you why. All right, but make it fast. I've got a girl and a Jeroboam of champagne waiting. Another girl and her father just paid me a visit. The name is Dobson. Oh, is that all? I thought something went wrong with the heist this afternoon. No, this is 10,000 times worse. Look, we can handle Weber. We can handle Reese. But Dobson, nobody handles Dobson. I warned you the minute he walked into the picture, I was walking out. Yeah. But now you can't. That's right, I can't. But I can protect myself, even if it means throwing you to the wolves. And believe me, after the way you behaved in this matter, nothing would give me greater pleasure. Cherokee, they have no claim on me. None at all. You married his daughter. The marriage was annulled. Annulled. That lets me out. No, it doesn't. Dobson started digging. And he found me. Before he would let me go, he made me promise I'd produce you within the hour, and you're going. You've got 20 minutes before he lets his dogs loose, and if he does, you will be alone when they call. Now, Mr. Brilliant, get yourself out of this one.
Rushing, would you tell Father that Mr. Murphy's in the tap room with me? Darling, I was nearly frantic. Don't ever vanish like that again. I didn't vanish. I was around. Yes, but not around me. I can't tell you how much I missed you. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. But I'm being a bad hostess. What would you like? Nothing. Nothing? Are you sure? I'm very sure. Paul, is there some reason for all this mystery? Dr. Green didn't want to tell me about Mandon, and then Mandon didn't want to tell me about you. You found me. But at what a price. I thought you'd left town. That's one thing you can be sure of. I won't leave town. Tell me about Mandon. Have you known him very long? Just since I've been here. He's almost an underworld character, you know. Really? Really. From now on, if you have any legal business, why don't you take it to Fred Golightly? Miss Margaret. Mr. Dobson is waiting. Thank you, Rushing. Paul, stop resenting us for just a little while. Please be nice to Father and listen to what he has to say. I've told him how wonderful you are, so don't fight with him, hmm? I don't want to fight with him. All I want is to be let alone. Well, hear him out anyway. He may have a surprise for you. Well, we meet again. Coin a phrase. And this time, much more pleasantly. Margaret, dear, I'd prefer to talk to Mr. Murphy alone. Oh, Father. Do as your father says, Margaret. It'll be all right. All right, Paul. I'll wait for you in the tap room. Sit down, Paul. You have quite a way with Margaret. Sir? I tell her to go and she argues. You tell her to go and she goes. You know, I'd almost given up hope of ever finding a man that Margaret would listen to. I assure you, I did nothing to encourage it. You couldn't have done better than to have shown a complete disregard for money. Good tactics. Very good. Obvious tactics to use on the daughter of a man as rich as you are. Unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to convince you that you have nothing I want. Now, look here, Paul. All the men Margaret's had anything to do with wanted only the responsibility of her money, not the responsibility of the woman. That made them subservient. And you can't do that with Margaret. The minute she dominates you, you're through. She's got to have a man she respects. She's young. She'll find one. She has. You. But you don't know anything about me. I'm a total stranger to you. I might be a thief, I might be a convict. I might even be a murderer. Paul, if you are any of those things, I'll find it out eventually. But when a drowning man reaches for a piece of driftwood, he doesn't mind getting splinters in his hands. And may I point out that a personal relationship with me might have certain advantages to an ambitious man. Oh, that I'm sure. Just how high does your disregard for money go? Because the man who accepts Margaret will also have to accept the management of her estate. Her estate? Yes. And though this may come as a surprise to you, Margaret's fortune is greater than mine. It was her grandmother's money. It's been in trust for years in the hands of some very talented bankers. Mr. Dobson. All I want is to be let alone. And there's another thing. When I found out how Margaret felt about you, I thought I'd better hold this up. It's the annulment petition. You're still married, you see. Think it over and let me know tomorrow. Good night, Paul. Good night, sir. Is this part of the tap room? Oh, you startled me. What did Father say? He, uh, made me a proposition. And you accepted? Hmm? Oh. He gave me till tomorrow morning to make up my mind. Well, what will you tell him tomorrow when you made up your mind? Probably that I accept. It's a 
pistol, isn't it? Yes, that's a pistol. Why are you carrying it? Protection. I have a permit. Protection against what? Hold ups. It's not the only reason, is it? Of course it is. I always thought when people carried guns, they were afraid of something. Not necessarily. You shouldn't have done that. Why? You've nothing to be afraid of anymore. Paul, let's get away from here. Let's get in the car and drive and just keep on going. For a week, a month, a year, as long as we like. You mean right now? This minute. Well, we can't do it just like that. I've got a few odds and ends to tie together at my place and pick up a few things. We can pick up anything we want on the way. Not this we can't. You really want to go? More than anything in the world. All right. I'll do what needs doing and uh, be back in an hour. I'll be waiting. Yeah. Oh. Just a minute. So you came back? Yes, I came back to get my money. I'm leaving. Where's the money? Are you? Are you leaving? Yes, where's the money? You and your rich girl? In which direction are you going? I'm going in all directions, and I'm taking my money with me. While you're at it, take this with you. What is it? A bullet. I know it's a bullet. It's got my brother's brains on it. They dug it out of his head before they buried him. What are you talking about? Covet. Covet! Tell him. I brought the bullet down myself. It came from the gun you had when you made the break. It was the only 38 that was fired. The guards had 30-30s and 45s. Get in the bedroom. This is the gun he means. The one you told me to get rid of. The one you killed my brother with. Now look, Holiday. You've got a wonderful setup here. You and Mandan and Jinx. I'm leaving it all to you. You can have it. I don't want it. I just want this next minute with you. You don't know how this thing is rigged. I sent a copy of that record to my brother. He hasn't played it yet, but if he doesn't hear from me once a week, he will. If he plays it, he'll know what to do. First, they'll pick up Weber, then they'll pick up the rest of you. And then you'll all fall down. Do you think I care now? If there's anything wrong with me, you did it. You made me go along with you. You changed me. You made me just the same as you are. And you've got nobody to blame but yourself. Oh, look, Holiday, this other girl. That's part of it, too. Oh, but you've got it all wrong. You don't know the whole story. I was going to surprise you. I was just over talking to her father. Her father wants me to handle all the money for her. You realize what that can mean? You started here with a lie, and you're going to end here with a lie. That's Dobson's chauffeur. He drove me over here. They want me to spend the night at the house and sign the papers in the morning. Let him in. The room's too full as it is. No, Holiday, don't do anything you'll be sorry for. Tomorrow, everything will be different. We'll be rich. All I've got to do is say yes to Dobson tomorrow. One little word, and we'll have millions. You only said one true thing in your life. And that's when you said you were going away tonight. And you are. Three miles out of town and six feet down. All alone. With nobody to lie to. And you can kiss tomorrow goodbye. But now, Holiday, listen. You shouldn't have killed my brother. <laughs> Not to trust a revolver. <laughs>
I know where I can get in touch with you. You think you can raise him by 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon? Oh, yes, I'm sure of that. Well, after you've located him, call me at headquarters. If I'm not in, just say Mr. Baker called. I don't know what that means, Mr. Baker. All right, Inspector Weber, Mr. Baker. I'll remember. I'll remember. I'll remember. I'll remember. I'll remember. Do you recognize that as your brother's voice? I do. There's no doubt in your mind? None whatsoever. The state rests. Mm -hmm.